Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Hey everybody, what is up? I hope you're having a great day today, wherever you are in the world. I'm here in San Diego, as most of you know, it's gorgeous, although man, it's starting to heat up. All right, today's episode, um, you, I just want to prime you guys right now. This, I was excited to do this episode with, this, with today's guest, and I will tell you, this guest drops a ton of different nuggets. If you know to listen, I mean, I think you have to be able to recognize the nuggets in here. And I, and I, and many of you will, some of you won't now. And, and again, there's something for everybody in this overall, I will tell you this overall, both him and I talk in this episode about how you guys as real estate agents, or if you do something else, that's okay. But why we should all think like internet marketers, stop thinking like realtors, start thinking like internet marketers. So with that being said, um, um, you know, we talk about how he went from really being offline, right, doing open houses, to being an internet, internet marketer, going online. Uh, we talk about how he his focus is trying to reach people while they – at the point, I should say, that they have intent. Now, did you hear, see what I just did there? I, I, I stuttered a little bit. Now, you'll hear me do that on this episode. My brain was working overtime trying to ask the right question, and uh, you'll hear me stop and stummer and stutter and stutter. Okay. Uh, we also talk about um, uh, why – hold on a second. Look at my notes. Um, how he gave away a piece of his liver and lived. I, I, was, I didn't understand how he did that, but we talked about that. Uh, why you should always, when you're, when you're creating content, why you should always hold back a bit, okay? And, we, and we, we talk about how to do that. Now, in this, you know, in this episode, we talk about scripts. We talk about specific strategies. I think you guys are going to take a lot, a lot of notes on this. Um, you know, when to door knock, how to door knock, what the script is, um, we talk about, oh, look, you know what we talk about? We talk about hacking things, right? Hacking things. How to write one blog post and then repurpose that blog post for your G Plus account, your Facebook account, all the way down to, to getting a full 1,500 blog post, all the way down to a 140-character tweet. So I hope you like it. I had fun with this guy. This is a guy I'm starting now. You know, We're a year and a half into this, this show, and uh, I'm starting to actually have some of our, our old guests back. Um, so this is a guy I think I want to have back. So I hope you like it. Now, here's the deal. My Twitter handle, hit me on Twitter. Um, our, our, we have a pretty active community on Twitter. Um, the hashtag for the show is unpack that idea. My Twitter handle is at super agents live. So I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to meet you. Um, look, normally at this point, I tell you, if you want to level up with radio, go to real estate radio experts.com. You should do that. Check it out. Watch some of the videos I have there. Learn about radio. It works, but I'm, I'm going to do that short form. Here's what I want to talk to you about. You know what? I, I, speaking of thinking like an internet marketer, I would love to help you guys do that. And, and one of the ways, and when it comes to being social, using social, and really because social is free, right? G plus tweet, Twitter and Facebook, it's free. But not everybody knows how to use these things properly. And if you go, hey, Toby, yeah, I'm on Facebook, man, I post, man. Oh, hey, I know how to use Facebook. Are you do- I'm telling you, Almost none of you do. So don't take offense to that. Um, so here is the deal, man. I'm putting together a, a course for you guys. And it's literally going to be, I ha- I'm, I'm working, I just finished the product scope. There's like 15 different modules. And it goes, it, 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 there's a beginning, of like a 101, which most of you guys know the 101. So that part's not for you. But then we get into some intermediate stuff, you know, uh, s- uh, strategies for building engagement, uh, how to get an easy 1,000 likes, uh, how to build authority on Facebook, running contests, uh, and then, you know, even getting leads, right? Getting leads, doing split testing, all that stuff. And then we get into the expert stuff, right? And the expert stuff is 
creating ads, how to buy ads, how to create ads, how to use the power editor, how to, how to build a custom audience, a lookalike audience, how to use retargeting uh, for Facebook ads. So um, we're going to do, this is going to be done. We're, we're going to release this. Once this gets released, it's going to be, it, we're going to do it in three ways. First hundred people to buy it. They're going to buy it for 197 bucks. All you guys are going to get a smoking deal. And, uh, I'm going to, I'm giving it, I'm going to let you buy it that cheap because I'm going to, I want testimonials from you guys. The next hundred is going to be 297 and then we're going to cap out at 397. So if you're interested, hit me with a, with an email, I'll put you on the list. I'll mark you as early. And, uh, and that's that. All right. Uh, hey, guys, let's get to it. I hope you like it. Today on the show, I'm excited to talk with today's guest. Now, today's guest has an interesting model. He's, he's uh, one of the expansion kind of model. Uh, he has a team uh, in Spokane, Washington with six people. He has another team in the Tri-Cities area, which I'm not sure what that is, but that's another, it's another expansion office with four agents. Now, number of transactions... Uh, last year, they did 130. Now, they have bigger goals this year. They're shooting for 171. Now, it's interesting why it's 171 and not 170 or 175. We'll, we'll, we'll get into why that is. Total volume, 22 million. Uh, I'm thrilled to w- welcome, uh, as my guest, Bo Appel. Hey, Bo, uh, thanks for taking the time out, man. Yeah, of course. Thanks now, for having me on. Sure. Now, um, I, first, did I butcher your last name? Was it Appel? Is that okay? <laughs> It's uh, it's actually Apelle. It's Hawaiian. I, I, you know, I felt like I, I knew I was doing something wrong when I saw Ohana Real Estate, but I'm like, oh wait a second, Ohana, but you're in Spokane, Washington. Okay, <laughs> so 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 Bo, listen, I've given the audience uh, just a brief overview, kind of a nuts and bolts overview of what you're doing with your business. But take a minute before we get into that. I want to know who Bo is, right? What is Bo all about? I always want to know the man behind the machine. So tell us a little about who you are, and then we'll get into your business. Well, I was uh, born and raised in Hawaii. My uh, father is Hawaiian. My mother is Caucasian. Um, I uh, went to school in Southern California, and um, within my first year, I uh, learned of my mother's sickness. She was uh, diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver, and I uh, had to get a transplant. And um, she, uh, I found out I was the only person in our family that was a match to be a potential living donor candidate for a transplant. So I left school, and uh, my parents moved up to Spokane to be closer to the transplant center in Denver, Colorado, and I uh, came up to Spokane to go through some testing, and we actually set a uh, transplant date. At the time, it was about 1 in 500 living candidates had fatal complications. So we just figured, you know, let's uh, have one last Christmas together just in case, even though the odds are pretty good. So we scheduled it for January, and about three weeks before uh, Christmas, we got a call, and they had one from uh, an accident that matched her. So she got that one, and I became her backup, the highest probability of rejections in the uh, first couple of years after transplant. So I stuck around just in case she needed me, which uh, thankfully she didn't. And uh, as a result, I um, took up roots in Spokane. I started a family. I uh, started my business, and... um, you know, eventually uh, started expanding my business. So when I first started, I I started with a, a pretty big company here locally, and um, their I guess their methods and strategies were a little archaic. And I started looking around for um, other options and kind of realizing that the real estate market uh, had dramatically changed with um, the internet. And that, um, you know, doing open houses and taking floor time wasn't the necessarily the best use of my time. So I started looking into uh, internet marketing and. Wait, wait, uh, hold on, hold on. I I have to stop you, Bo. I really do. Let's go back to this liver thing, okay? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. A a human has one liver. What, how, like, what. (laughs) <laughs> okay. How, why were you? Uh, well, what, what they? Yeah. What, well, what they uh, would have done is they would have taken sixty percent of mine and given it to her, which actually would have been a uh, a full liver for her because she's a little bit smaller than I am, a lot bit smaller than I am. Um, and the liver is actually the only organ in the body that grows back. Really, it's, uh, pretty amazing. And it grows back ten uh, percent for every week. So within six weeks, I would have had a new liver, or sixty percent of a new liver, anyway. And uh, and that's how they 
accomplish that. <laughs> that is amazing. I had no clue. I, 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 I literally tuned out from you talking and I started looking because I was like, well, hold on a second. This guy was going to give up his lira. So that's amazing. Um, um, now, um, but so you moved to, 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 uh, to Denver because you guys were close to this, this clinic that, that knew how to do this. Um, um, for her to get her liver that she has today, uh, somebody had to be an organ donor. Yeah. Yeah. Then they actually, we moved to Spokane. She's originally from Spokane. And okay. so she wanted to be close to uh, her parents up here. Okay. Um, and the, the transplant center in Colorado was close enough that she could take the flight down there as soon as we were ready. Um, and they happened to get one uh, from a younger guy. I think he was 26 when he passed away in, I believe, a motorcycle accident. Wow. And that one happened to match her. And, and the funny thing with livers is that you have to, they have to be a match. You can't just take anyone's liver. So she was actually number three on the list nationally at the time. And it didn't match the first two people. So she got that one. Mm. And we kind of joke about it that um, she, uh, she, she now has some male tendencies. She likes to drink beer and watch football. Is that true? Is that true? <laughs> no, it's not true, but it's kind of <laughs> okay. funny. All right, got it. <laughs> There was but, a movie. Uh, yeah, she's doing great. Yeah, there was a movie like that, wasn't there? Where like there was a there was that kind of a, anyhow. Let's not talk about. Movie. Okay, all right. So thank you, man. I appreciate <laughs> you clearing that up. So 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 let's go back. So so um, you uh, now what drew you to real estate? Why real estate? Well, you know, I I had always had an entrepreneur spirit. My parents had always been in business for themselves, and I knew when I was in college that I didn't want to work for someone else. And the reason that um, I, I guess I never went back to college after going through this experience with my mother is um, when I was in college, I just I kind of was looking around thinking, you know, I'm learning how to work for someone else. I'm not really yeah. sure of exactly what I want to do, and I think I'm kind of wasting my money in, until I decide what I want to do. Um, I had gone through several other ventures previous to getting into real estate. I started a t-shirt company with a friend of mine. Um, and that was more for fun. Um, didn't really create a lot of profitability. Um, and I'd also uh, opened a restaurant with another friend of mine. And that was fun, but it was also a heck of a lot of work. And I was basically married to the business, working 70 plus hours a week. And in the restaurant industry, you know, a lot of the uh, employees are younger kids, you know, in college or fresh out of high school, and they're, they're not the most reliable people. So it created a, a big headache for me, and I thought, you know, if I'm going to be in business for myself, maybe I, I don't want to be in this industry. So I sold my interest and um, went to waiting tables for a little bit while I tried to figure out what I wanted to do next. And it happened that um, my wife at the time, her best friend's boyfriend was in real estate, and we went snowboarding with them one day, and he told me that I should really get into it. This was previous to the, the crash. And he was telling me that, you know, you can make a hundred grand a year, no problem. All you got to do is show up and answer the phone, and it, it's so easy and so much fun. And I thought, oh, well, you know, I'll give this a shot. And, um, of course, by the time I had uh, gotten licensed, the market was uh, just about to crash. Oh. And once I got my feet wet, it crashed, and... I actually look at that as more of a blessing than anything because I had to learn how to generate business yeah. um, in tough times, which makes it really easy now that the market is recovering. You know, there were a lot of people, uh, you know, pre-crash who were putting up big numbers and they thought they were rock stars. As soon as that crash happened, we found out who 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 was a rock star and who was not, and most of them were not. Um, so yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to talk about how you got through that, uh, uh, unless you think it's instructive. I don't want to go through talk about how you got through that crash, but you, where I cut you off to take you back to the liver story, you started, you started talking about that you, you, you were learning how to do internet marketing. Yeah. And I, and I think that's really important because that's really what led us to where we're at today. Okay. Um, you know, most of the agents that were producing in that office I was in, had been around for a really long time. They had huge spheres of influence and they had, you know, lived their entire life in this area. So they knew everybody. And, um, and then the others that were kind of coming up were doing, you know, open houses and, um, uh, taking floor time and they, you know, they were doing all right, but they definitely weren't doing what I wanted to do. You know, they were just kind of barely making it and waiting for the market to return. 
And I, I just kind of felt like I can't wait around for the market to return. I want to I wanna have some control over my destiny here. So I, I started taking a look at it and realizing that, you know, consumers don't need real estate agents to look at homes anymore. There are sites like Zillow and Trulia and Realtor.com. They can look at every picture that's on the MLS. They can um, find out everything they need to know about the home and really identify the homes they want to see before they even contact an agent. So I, I kind of thought, you know, if I can get in front of these people before they contact an agent, you know, when they're just starting the process, then I'm going to be that much further ahead of the game, and I'll probably have a good chance of, of catching a lot more business. So that's why I started focusing on Internet marketing and search engine optimization, social media optimization, blogging, uh, pay-per-click ads, Facebook targeted advertising, that kind of stuff. And um, it took me a while to figure it out. I actually taught myself how to write HTML coding so I could put up some kind of cool websites and landing pages and hmm. um, and set up some lead capture mechanisms. And um, the further I got along, the better I got at it. And I, I got to a point where I was generating 300-plus leads a month by myself. Hmm. And so that was um, that, that was obviously way more than any one person can handle. So what I started doing was uh, working on converting them, but never really meeting with them. I'd convert these uh, these new registrations on my website, and once I had them converted, I would pair them up with another agent and take a referral fee off of it. And those agents were happy because they weren't generating business of their own. And I was happy because I was able to convert a lot more business and not be showing homes 24-7. And uh, eventually I realized that it made a lot more sense to start my own brand and actually bring these agents on as you know a permanent uh, piece of, of, of the brand and uh, someone who actually represents my brand and what we stand for. And so that's kind of how I got into starting my first team. <laughs> so And... Uh, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, um, um, how much of of when you taught yourself this, right? So, I mean, you you really started the. I mean, you. I don't know. Uh, you're 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 in an interesting character in the sense that you taught yourself how to do social media, uh, Google pay per click, you know, internet marketing, SEO, all that stuff, and you taught yourself how to write HTML code so you can throw up some websites. Now. Out of all those buckets, um, uh, from SEO to to social, whatever, what of those buckets are is still working for you today? Oh gosh, all of them. All of them. Okay. They're all working fantastically. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we we diversified quite a bit. So we, you know, we've gotten plenty of strategies from not just our internet marketing, but all the way down to door knocking. And uh, the way we do things is quite a bit different than the competition, I mean, even down to door knocking. Um, but, yeah, just about every one of them works pretty darn well. And if, if we find that one isn't performing that well, we'll usually pull back on, on that particular strategy and, you know, reinvest the uh, our money into something that's producing better numbers. Okay. No, and I look. I mean, that, that, I, I, I'm ex- extremely excited to talk with you because um, you know I, I, I I'm I'm fundamentally an internet marketer myself, and I think what I do see out there is that that ninety five percent, ninety nine percent of real estate agents don't think like internet marketers at all. You know, they think like and and, and no. I think there's a lot of room for people to learn and grow in this. So so. Um, let me let's go back. Uh, let me let me here. Here's the setup that I want you to talk uh, through, kind of. Okay, so so okay. If, if you go back two years ago, home value sites were just you know some people were early with it and they were working. People were getting you know a thousand fifteen hundred leads a month from uh, home value sites. Now as realtors ruin everything, and as you start to get density in the market, and everybody's got a home value site. Those start to to work less. So. If we go back to when you started, what were some of the things that worked really well and 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 now have have are, are, is work being less effective? Okay, so what, I guess what what have we kind of pulled out of then? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, perfect, easy way. Okay, well, you know, uh, Craigslist was a huge um, asset for us in the beginning. Okay, or I should, I guess I should say for me because it was just me in the beginning. Um, 
it, uh, it was fantastic. I, I made some agreements with agents within my brokerage and a few uh, agents that I had great relationships outside of my brokerage, and that was a little bit more tricky, but I, I made these agreements so uh, I could advertise their listings. And for the most part, these agents were really excited because I was getting their listing out. It was something that they showed their their sellers to show that they were giving them more exposure. And for the most part, I was bringing them um, buyers for their listings. So, you know, it was a, a great relationship. And I was posting anywhere from about 150 to maybe 250 or so ads a day on Craigslist. Wow. Um, and I did that through a couple of different accounts to a couple of different websites. So that way I wasn't putting out the exact same ad to the exact same website and getting all of my ads flagged. And then, of course, I'm sure you know, um, gosh, maybe it was about two years ago that uh, Craigslist changed their uh, terms of use, mm-hmm. and uh, they took out all the HTML tags and yep. made it a little bit more difficult because you couldn't add a link to your ad that somebody could click on and go back to your website. So now we, we have to uh, uh, recommend that they visit our website for additional information, but we, we put the... Uh, you know, our company hotline number in there, and um, we offer them a few pictures of the listing and, and a brief description. One of the, the things about Craigslist, you know, it, it has petered off quite a bit here in mm-hmm. the last year or two. Um, it does still produce for us, and, and we will occasionally pick up some pretty decent leads from Craigslist. Um, but uh, one of the things that I notice is that most of the people that are posting ads or most of the realtors posting ads on Craigslist do it the wrong way. They give away everything. So they leave the consumer literally no reason to uh, give them a call or yeah. contact them. You know, I mean, it's essentially they're getting the same thing that they get on Zillow or Trulia. And um, and so, you know, that, that's, I guess, one suggestion I'd make if anyone is going to venture out into uh, Craigslist is to, to, you know, hold back a little bit. You know, we don't, we don't advertise the price for two reasons. One, we want them to call us. And uh, the other reason is because the prices change, and every time it does, we have to go through and find that ad and change the price, and it can create an, a lot of a extra work for us. Yeah. So, you know, we don't advertise the price. We will tell them, about, you know, how many bedrooms, bathrooms, and square footage the home offers. Um, and like I said, we'll give a, a listing description and a few pictures, but that's about it. Um, you know, if they if they want to know more, if they want to know where the property is located, mm-hmm. or if they want to know the current price, they've got to call one of our agents. Yep, brilliant, man. I, you know, I, that is such a great strategy. You got to hold something back for sure. I one hundred percent agree with that. And you know, go, going back to when you could could add HTML in into your your title or, or subject or whatever. I remember used I used to be able to do it where I could literally bold my ad and create white space for two or three lines above and below my my thing. So it would be, you know, house, 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 and all of a sudden it would be th- white space, my li- my my listing, and then, or I, I, I was flipping homes. <clears throat> or so my property and then white space. Um, I do yeah. remember when that went away. Okay, so so th- that's a great tip on Craigslist, but you are pulling back from Craigslist. What else, again, because I want people, here's why I'm asking it, it, it in this way, uh, Bo, is I want people to, to know where they should try to sp- spend their dollars and their time and where not to. So you're the g- perfect person to find out. So Craigslist, you're pulling back, <laughs> and, and you gave a tip for that. Where else ha- have you seen less effectiveness in your, that you're pulling back? Well, you know, outside of Internet marketing, we've pulled back considerably on open houses. Mm. Uh, we will do one if the seller requests one, and, uh, and, and we will, you know, pick up buyers. I mean, Anyone who's in real estate knows that the open house isn't for the seller. It's really for you to pick up new business. And, uh, and we'll explain that to our sellers so they understand. You know, some of them still want us to do them, and that's totally fine. Um, you know, it, it just means extra business for us if we do happen to have someone stop by. But uh, we're a little bit more proactive. I, I kind of feel like an open house is more of a passive strategy. You're just kind of sitting there hoping that somebody stops by. Um, so we've kind of replaced our open house strategy with um, a door knocking strategy, and kind of like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, it's it's about how you do it. I I was um, I, I kind of came up with a new strategy for door knocking one year because I had two agents come by my neighborhood and knock on my door in the span of 12 months, and I just was thinking how awful 
um, it was, you know, and, and what a huge waste of time it was for them because they came by and they basically handed me a business card and said that uh, they were the local area expert and if I was interested in buying or selling, I should give them a call. And I thought, okay, well, you, you haven't really given me any kind of a value proposition here. There's nothing that gets me excited and you're directly asking me for business. And and it's kind of like when you walk into a store and a sales associate comes up and says, is there anything I can help you with? Your knee-jerk response is, no, I'm just looking. Yeah. And that's kind of how I felt when these guys knocked on my door. Hmm. So I, I thought there's got to be a better way to do this. And so we kind of changed that strategy a little bit. And um, and we started approaching people in neighborhoods with, a, 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 I guess, a couple of different approaches. Um, the first one would be if we list a new home, we'll go out and knock the first, you know, two or 300 doors surrounding that home. And uh, the, the script kind of goes like this. We'll say, hey, you know, my name is Boa Pele. I'm with the Ohana Realty Group. Um, I, I just listed a house down the street here at 123 Main Street. I don't know if you know Bob and Mary, but they just put this house in the market with us. And as a courtesy to the neighbors, we like to let everyone know that there's going to be a little bit more increased traffic through the neighborhood. Mm. You may see some people walking around the house and peering in the windows. And like I said, as a courtesy, we just like to let you know so you're not concerned or, you know, you're not uh, afraid that it's maybe a prowler or anything. Um, and so we wanted to give you a heads up. And, hey, while I'm here, you know, I thought I'd give you a chance to choose your next neighbor. Do you happen to know of anybody who might be interested in purchasing this home? Mm. And in, in a lot of cases, these people will say, oh, yeah, you know, I was just talking to my friend who was over for dinner last night. And she's thinking about um, moving up this way. You know, here's her number. Or, you know, here, you know, give me a flyer and I'll let her know. So, you know, we ended up picking up some good business that way. And the funny thing is, is the guard goes down right away when they realize that I'm not asking you for anything. I'm just coming out, like I said, as courtesy to let you know that there are going to be some people coming through this neighborhood who aren't usually here. Yeah. Um, and so the, the guard goes down and they open right up and they start talking to us. And the funny thing is, is on the flyer that we hand them when we knock on the door, um, it has a picture of the house and, um, you know, some information about it and, of course, our contact information. And one of the most common questions is, well, what do you think my house is worth? Or, oh, we've been thinking about selling. Would you mind, you know, doing taking a market a analysis for yeah. us? Or taking a look. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So, it, like I said, it's it's not so confrontational. You know, we're not uh, coming in and immediately asking them for their business, and as a result, they end up asking us. <laughs> no, that, I think that's so a, it's like, yeah. I was just say that's I think no, that's, a, that's a great strategy, uh, you know, and I think you are approaching it. And I think there's lots of ways to do that. I mean, you, you can be like, hey, listen, you know, my name's Bo. You know, I I I I, I take I just took over this area, whatever, and we're organizing, you know, to to for, to get all the neighbors to know one another. We're organizing a giant block, uh, uh, you know, yard sale. Uh, you know, or block sale, you know, uh, in in uh, four weeks from now, you know, would you like to participate? Or, hey, you know, I'm, I'm working with a school and we're doing a food drive. And, um, and oh, by the way, you mm -hmm. know, um, yeah, so I think that's a great approach. Um, yeah. Yeah, we also have a, a couple of other uh, strategies for door knocking. Uh, for instance, um, sometimes we'll list, it actually happens twice this month alone, where we'll list a house and on the first day we'll get multiple offers over full price. And uh, that's always great because the sign goes up, and the very same day the sold sign goes on top of it. And so what we'll do is we'll immediately, within a couple of days, get out and start door knocking the neighborhood. And uh, first couple hundred doors just around that listing, and we'll let the neighbors know, hey, you know, my name is Bo Pele. I'm with the Ohana Realty Group. We just listed Bob and Sally's house down the street here at 123 Main Street. Um, and we put it on the market and received multiple offers over full price on the first day. And as a result of our high-tech internet marketing strategies, we procured a large number of buyers looking to live in this neighborhood. Unfortunately, we don't have enough listings to meet their needs. Do you happen to know of anybody else who might be thinking about selling in this neighborhood? Mm. And again, the guard goes down because they're not asking you to list your house. And occasionally they'll say, oh, yeah, the lady across the street is talking about selling. Or, you know, the, the more common response is, really, over full price on right. the first day? right. What do you think my house is worth? Right. <laughs> so we end up picking up a few more listings as a result almost every time. That's amazing. That's amazing. What is there a way to hack that, uh, Bo? You know, let's say that somebody w wants to 
to to you know to door knock. Um, they think that strategy, mm-hmm. but but they don't have a listing, you know, and they didn't sell a house. What uh, again? Is there a way that, to kind of hack that? And and what's your thoughts? Sure. On that? Yeah. Well, you know, one you can borrow a listing, you can um, door knock for okay. somebody else's listing. Yep. But um, you know, one of the things that we'll do if we don't have a listing in the area and we haven't listed, you know, we're not listing a house there. Um, we will uh, create a flyer that has some information about a few buyers who are looking specifically for a home in that area. So they'll, you know, have just their first names because we don't want to give away their private information. Yeah. Um, and it'll have, you know, a little bit of information about what they're looking for, say a four bedroom, two bath with 2,000 plus square feet, um, their price point, you know, their price range, and their time frame. Um, right now, one to three months, six plus months, whatever it is. And uh, we'll get out and kind of use the same script that, you know, we, we due to our high-tech internet marketing strategies, we've secured um, a high volume of buyers who are looking in this area and would like to live in your neighborhood. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any listings that meet their needs. Do you happen to know of anybody who might be thinking about selling their home this year? And so it's essentially the same script, just a slightly different strategy. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, now are you, are you still, um, what are you doing in the world of, uh, of, um, you know, S I mean, look, so SEO is dead and maybe not for, for a guy like you, uh, you know, I mean with, with Google, you know, with all their, you know, penguin updates and everything else, a lot of people who are relying on SEO got murdered. Um, are you still finding success or what's your thoughts around SEO? You know, I love SEO. And mm. the thing is, is the people I think that are getting murdered are the cheaters. <laughs> and, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean that they, they found a way to kind of hack the system and, uh, and, and cheat the coding. And once Google updates their algorithm, then they, you know, close that window and those people kind of lose out. So, you know, SEO is, is hard work. If you're going to do it right and you're going to stick around, then you've got to put a lot of time into it. And that means blogging and not just blogging once a week, but blogging every day and creating great, fresh, unique content and keywording it right. And, um, and like I said, just doing it regularly. I mean, that's one of the things that I've identified um, in training and coaching our agents is, you know, the discipline to do the same thing every day and to follow the system. And uh, and I think that SEO is is fantastic if you're willing to put the the work in. And unfortunately, a lot of people aren't. <laughs> yeah, but it really depends. I think, but I think yeah. So I I think the 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 the, the piece with that, um, you know, if you're going to blog and you know and, and or, you know if, if you're going to create content, for example, you know the the deal is. There's not – people have a hard time measuring their success. So they're like, oh, oh, man, I'm spending an hour a day, 30 minutes a day, whatever it is, and, and they can't clearly put a transaction to that, to that channel, and they just quit. And, it's, and I think, I, I think yeah. that's a mistake. You know, you gotta, you got to put it in time. You know? It's just like, it's just like you know, door knocking or, 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 or sending out mailers. You know? it, takes, it takes time um, to, to seed that kind of thing. Um, and, and I, well, go, sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to say, you know, the, that's one of the things that we're always talking to our agents about is it's the farmer's mentality. You're planting the seed today to harvest your crop three to four months from now. Right. And uh, if you if you can practice that and 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 um, and focus on that delayed gratification, you'll get results. But it's the same thing with you know blogging and sending out mailers and just about any other strategy is. It, it takes time, you know, oh, and that's, you're right, the biggest mistake that most people make when it comes to blogging is they blog for, you know, a couple of months, and then they come back to me and say, I posted a blog post every day for 60 days straight, and I'm still not ranking. Yeah. And I'll have to explain to them that, hey, you know, you've got to do it for six plus months. Do it for six months every day, and you'll start seeing results. And then keep doing the same thing every day to see those results get even better. But, um, you know, that's, unfortunately, that's, I think, society today and, and really a lot of real estate agents, you know, they, they're, they're looking for the here and now. They, they can't look three, four, five, six months down the road. And I'm always telling our agents, whatever you're doing today represents a paycheck three months from now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So what do you think, what do you think, um, uh, look, uh, let me. I'll just tell you what I'm doing, and and everybody can learn from what I'm. So, so number one, 
when you when you I think there's ways to hack the, to hack and not to use that word too many times, but 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 to, to be deliberate about how you spread content, right? You can create content, your blog, create it, put it on your Toby Salgado or or Bo Appelle. Uh, a website, you know, but then you promote it. You, you know, if you're smart about it, you promote that content. It, well, let me back up. Let me back up. Here's what I tell people to do, Monty. <clears throat> Sorry, Monty. I was got Bo. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I just, I just got a, a PayPal payment from this guy, Monty. Okay, look. <clears throat> so cr- create, you know, figure out a topic that you want to talk about. Create a video. Post that video on YouTube. Then talk about take take some of that content that you have on your video. Take that, the, a bulk of it, 60, 70, 80% of it, write a blog post and post, post that on your Toby Salgado Boa Pele blog. Take a, 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 a smaller portion of that and put, or, or maybe even the whole thing, but I would say a smaller portion, put it on your G plus. Uh, uh, profile, um, you know, mm-hmm. and, and just keep ripping it down, ripping it down, ripping it down till, till, till finally, you know, you only have 140 characters and you drop it out on Twitter, <clears throat> right? And if you can do yeah. that and, you know, so you, so you post it on LinkedIn, you post it on Facebook, right? You, you, you are, you know, a member of a bunch of different groups on Facebook and, you know, and you, and you promote that or, or point people to your content. That's how you're going to get much, much faster results than than trying to use all the right keywords for Spokane and and hope that you get some some you know Google juice uh, you know six months three months whatever from now. Oh, absolutely! Because if you're just relying on those keywords, you've got to figure that you're competing with these you know multi million dollar companies like Zillow and Trulia who are who have huge advertising budgets. So there's no way that you can compete with them if you're just going head to head. So you, you need to go further than just keywording your blog the right way. And, and like you said, it's a matter of sharing it on the different social media platforms, creating a video, all doing everything all the way down to Twitter. And and that gives you a little bit of an edge on the companies like Zillow because their their blog post isn't necessarily going to be spread out that much. Yeah. And you're reaching so many more people. And, and with social media, it's, it's so fantastic because you're reaching them on a more personal level. And a lot of these people are people that you know, you know, they're, they're past clients or their friends, and they have no problem sharing your content with one of their friends, yeah. especially if it's something that makes sense and is kind of uh, pertains to something that they recently spoke about. See, and, and I'll tell you, like for you, for you, Bo, like you have all this great stuff, and I and do I I, I don't want to talk too much because I want to get I want to get all the nuggets out of you that we can. But you have all this great stuff that's great knowledge. You know, the, the NAR, right? Average agent, it's fifty, a woman, fifty seven years old, right? You know all this stuff, Bo, that that she doesn't. So places like Inman, right? I have a deal with Inman. Like I, I can release my content, I, this interview right here, I can give it to Inman and I'll reach a ton of people through Inman's platform. I, we used to have a, a deal with uh, Realtor.com and you know, two times mm-hmm. a month they would release an episode of ours. Now, some, some, some crybaby girl cried, you know, threw a fit about some of our content and then they pulled our relationship, was, which was crap. But, but again, for an agent, you know, if you want to get business, it's not just talking to your farm. You know, there's, there, you know, reach an agent you're in Washington, Spokane. You can reach an agent and develop a relationship with somebody in Washington D.C. and you know, and that person you can get referrals from that person. So, so oh, yeah. So let's 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 get back on to social. You know, when when I say social, when when people think of social, they think of Facebook. You know, and maybe Twitter. When when you say social media, what does that mean to you, Bo? Oh gosh, that that means the big dunks. So that means Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google Plus, LinkedIn, um, all of those sites. But it's it's not necessarily just a matter of of being present there. It's it's engaging people, and uh, it's speaking in terms of the other person's interest. Yeah. So you know, one of the biggest mistakes that most agents make on social media is they get out there and all their posts are about the new listing that they just had, or their recent closing, or you know, how many homes they sold this week. You know, it's it's all about me. It's all, you know, it's it's something that if you don't know this person, you're like, okay, this is annoying. I, you, yeah, I know that you think you're fantastic, but I'm, I, but I'm not interested in listening to you talk about yourself anymore. That's right. And and that's the big mistake that people make. Yeah. And so it's, it's speaking in terms of the other person's interest. And that's a, a quote from the uh, the book How to Win Friends and Influence People by mm. Dale Carnegie. It's a fantastic read. Yeah. It's actually required reading for all of our agents. 
Um, and uh, if, if you can use that strategy on, on social media platforms, you get so much further. So, you know, it's engaging people and, and being uh, interested in what their, their needs and their wants are and, uh, and reaching them, like I said, on a more personal level there. So you're not just some company or some agent who's just spewing um, information about, you know, how great you are, or how many listings you have, or this great new listing that you took. You know, if somebody's not in the market for a home, they're likely not to pay attention to that. But if you can get offer them something of value, something that, um, you know, they may be interested in whether or not they're looking to buy a home, um, they're going to like it, and they're going to share it. And every time they like it or share it, all their friends see it. And there's bound to be somebody in their network who's looking to buy or sell. Mm. Okay. So, so... Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. And look, and, and the only thing I'd add to that is, you know, when people, if, you know, if, if you are that NAR 57 year old woman, you know, on Facebook, there's a couple, a couple uh, r- rules of thumb. <laughs> Number one, you know, it, it's basically like a cocktail party, right? You, you, you never want to mm-hmm. talk with that person that rolls up to you at a party and says, Hey, but what's up? My name's Toby. This is what I do. This is why I'm so awesome. I just got this listing, you know, look, pal, I, I'm not in, you know, you, you have to add value. And, and the rule of thumb is, you know, if you are, are going to if you're going to be on Facebook on your personal page, it should be eighty percent personal, twenty percent business. And, I, and too many people Absolutely. like literally flip it the other way around or go you know a mm-hmm. hundred. So anyhow, okay. Um, so how in terms of your let me go back. You guys are doing a hundred and thirty deals. Um, uh, okay, I have a couple questions for you. One out of that one hundred and thirty deals that you did do what percentage of those or what number of those do you, could you contribute to, you know, uh, SEO, social blogging versus your internet marketing stuff, you know, Google pay-per-click or Facebook ads or, or, or I guess, I guess what I'm talking about is free versus paid. Free versus paid. Well, um, on any given year, about 46% of our closed transactions are a result of free um, advertising or, or free sources. Wow. So, um, you know, and that's kind of both together with it. So it's not necessarily just engaging somebody on Facebook and picking up a referral or picking them up as a client. Um, it can also be um, something as, as simple as uh, meeting somebody in the grocery store, but we've all called that together about 46 of, uh, 46% of all of our transactions are a result of um, a free source. That is amazing, dude. That's amazing. I mean, I think so many people yeah, out there. But, well, I was just going to say that, you know, that's what I tell new agents is, you know, you'd be amazed at how much business you can do for absolutely nothing. You don't have to invest a dime into advertising to uh, to do a substantial amount of business. Now, eventually, if you want to take it to the next level, you're going to have to start spending some money. But I always encourage people, start with the free stuff. So I agree. So I mean, look, let me ask you this then. I mean, you've been at this for a while. What if 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 I'm gonna and I don't know if you coach anybody on this stuff, Bo, but you know, if I'm gonna hire you or a guy like you to say, hey, show me how to show me how to generate forty six percent of my business for free, which in your case would be about you know uh, sixty or so listings, um, is how long does it if I'm doing all the right stuff? How long, you know, what's a runway for me to actually generate business, uh, 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 10 deals a year from these sorts of channels? <laughs> well, I, uh, 10 deals a year, I think, should be really easy. Okay. Um, and, you know, it, it really depends on um, your, your particular situation. But um, I have new agents that will start and they'll, they'll generate, you know, three or four deals in their first three months. And, uh, and part of that is because they're, they're getting out and using some of the, uh, strategies that we teach them as far as engaging people, um, out at the grocery store. Costco is one of our, our huge lead sources, believe it or not. We have one agent in particular who happens to be my father, um, who picks up a ton of business from Costco. He, he knows that every time he goes to Costco, he's actually making money. He's not spending money. Um, so, you know, I, I tell you, you know, if you employ the free, strategies and um, and you're disciplined and you do it every day and you follow the system, there's no reason why within your first three months of being in business or trying these strategies, you shouldn't be able to pick up at least two transactions. 
And, you know, over the course of a year, we're looking at somewhere around, you know, 15, 16, 17 transactions, if you do it right, for free. So, so what does your dad do? What, I mean, I mean, t- tell us about what your, you know, I guess your, so your dad's, uh, um, he's an high eye. I'm sure he's a very gregarious guy and, you know, he loves talking with people. Um, well, I mean, what does he do? Just he, 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 he walks around and, and hangs out where, where the samples are getting doled out. Well, kind of, you know, it, it's funny. His uh, nickname in our family is Mr. Aloha. And in Hawaiian, um, Aloha has several meanings. It's, you know, it could be hello, goodbye. And it can also mean uh, love, and uh, it's got a deeper spiritual meaning. But basically, the aloha spirit in Hawaii is that warm spirit, and that mm. you know, so that kind of piece that you can't describe when you go to Hawaii. You come back and go, "Wow, the people there are just so friendly." Well, that's the aloha spirit. Okay. And uh, and that's who he is. He is a high eye. He gets out there and he just engages people. So he'll be walking by and he'll see something in somebody's cart and say, "Hey, where'd you get that?" Mm-hmm. And um, they'll tell him where, what aisle it was in, and he'll then he'll ask him a few questions and get him talking and speak in terms of the other person's interest. And before you know it, they're chatting about other things. And one of the questions that we train all of our agents to ask, one of the most important questions that you can ask anybody that you meet is, what do you do for a living? Because the natural response after they respond is, well, what do you do? Mm-hmm. And then it gives you an opportunity to say, well, I'm in real estate. You know, and of course, you know, you can follow that up with whatever you want, but in most cases, you know, you end the conversation by saying, hey, by the way, do you happen to know of anybody who's looking to buy a home, sell a home, or invest in real estate that I can help? Yeah. And uh, so that's that's really all he does is he just strikes up conversations with people and um, and makes sure that he's letting them do most of the talking and he's facilitating the conversation. And, when, you know, that's another thing we train our agents on is when you're engaging people, you know, not only speak in terms of the other person's interest, but pretend that you're on a first date. You know, when you go on a first date, you know, you should ask a lot of questions. You want to get to know the person, but you also want them to talk because the more they talk, the more comfortable they feel with you, the more they project themselves on you, and the more memorable you become. And and you're also giving them one of the greatest gifts you can ever give a human being. You're letting them be heard. You know, everybody from a little child to a 90-year-old man wants to be heard. And when you can give somebody that gift, they really remember you, and they like you. Yeah, they like you a lot. And uh, and that's what we train our agents to do, and that's exactly what he does. And he picks up a ton of business. It's, and I'll tell you something. So I mean, that's my experience with this show. I mean, I I have people on my show that that you know, as I told you, we've had the the. I mean, people that make three four million dollars a year. They're very very busy people. But guess what? After they come on my show. Like, uh, I, you know, they'll take my phone calls. They're like, I like that Toby kid, man. I, you know, I spent, I spent an hour with him and, and, uh, you know, and, and hopefully we've had some fun and all that stuff. So I, I totally agree with that. Um, look, we have yeah. to start wrapping up. Dang, man. Um, so w- roll into, uh, what should we know? Um, you know, so, so, so the, we, we've talked about some of the free stuff and if we get into the online paid stuff, right? If we, and, and I'm going to let you make the choice, right? Because we can talk about Google pay-per-click. We can talk about Facebook ads, you know, some of the, some of the ways to, to deploy some marketing dollars, but where you don't need a lot of marketing dollars. But the, the issue the, that I have with Google pay-per-click or Facebook ads or whatever, it's always on the wrong side, right? It's always on the buyer side. And, uh, and, you know, as you know, Bo, you know, you can handle seven to 10 listings for the same amount of time and energy that you handle one buyer. So you tell me and you tell the audience, what do you, where do you think you get out the most value to them? Talking about how to properly implement a, a, a Google pay-per-click campaign or Facebook or, or one of your strategies to go and, and find uh, sellers? Oh, gosh. Well, I, uh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a really tough one. You know, one of the things that I really enjoy is the uh, Facebook targeted advertising. Okay. You know, that's a, such a phenomenal tool that so many people really don't know much about. You can target a very, very specific demographic. So, you know, one of the things that we'll do is, you know, for instance, we had this house last year. It was a luxury home um, in a higher-end neighborhood. And um, and what we did is we, we kind of went around and door knocked and asked, you know, started conversations with people to try and find out 
what the demographic of that neighborhood was. And we found out there were a lot of doctors there, and a lot of them worked at this big hospital that was only a couple miles away. Hmm. Um, so what we did is we created a Facebook targeted ad that went out to people with a PhD who were working in this hospital and making over a hundred thousand dollars a year. And, um, and it, it narrowed the list down to under a thousand people. So the best part about that is one, we're not wasting our money on ads that are getting in front of people who just wouldn't ever be able to afford this home or wouldn't be interested in it. And we're targeting people that probably know somebody who already lives in this neighborhood. Mm. And so it, it, uh, it gets us in front of the right people and saves our marketing budget. And as a result, we sold the homes pretty quickly. And then we also got a referral out of it when we sent them over to Seattle to buy a home. Got it. Yeah. And, and, and I will say so, that, uh, and, you know, the uh, Facebook is not great, so at least it, it, in my experience. It's not great at uh, when you look at the economics of hey, you got to make 100K or more. They're not great at that. Um, but I think yeah. if you create that audience, you know, talk to talk to uh, everybody a little bit about. Uh, uh, so, number one, people don't know how to use do that. Number one, Mo- most people don't. Number two, people don't know how to create a custom audience or a lookalike audience. Have 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 I don't want to put you on the spot, Bo. Have you played with c- custom audiences or lookalike audiences at all? Um, a little bit, okay. uh, a little bit. I, um, yeah, I mean, it, it is a, a complicated tool, and, um, and and we do play with custom audiences occasionally. Um, it, I think it's really about making your ad stand out, because if you, I mean, even if you look at Google pay-per-click, you get on there, and every single ad says the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's about making yourself stand out a little bit more, and um and catching somebody's eye, whether that's through an image or through the wording that you're using. I was uh, at a conference a couple of years ago, and I was fortunate enough to hear Ben Kinney speak. I'm mm-hmm. sure you know who that is. Yep. And one of the things that he was doing on his Google pay-per-click ads is he was putting a picture of a house on there, and it was upside down. So as you're going through, you're looking at these ads, and you see you know, um, all these pictures of houses, and then you see one that's upside down. That's, that's out of place, so your, your eye is quickly drawn to it. And it was a, some kind of an ad for um, uh, a sh- people who were in a short sale situation. Mm. And he just talked about how much traffic he got from that ad. And I just thought, that's genius. I really got to find a way to make my ad stand out so that your eye is drawn to it and it's not the same as everything else that you see. Yeah. I mean, copy and imagery is everything. Um, and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's even, you know, it's, it's, it's even, you know, having a title in there, right? Like it's, it's it, anyhow. Yeah. That's a whole, I mean, that, 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 uh, that, uh, skill is a whole skill. I mean, you know what I mean? That's why ad agencies exist, but, um, um, so all this stuff again is on the buyer side. What are you doing other than your unique door knocking? What are you, what are you doing to go out and get, uh, listings? Uh, well, we uh, have a prospecting night every week where our agents will call expired. Mm. And, um, you know, each MLS is different. So for ours, for instance, um, you can find the uh, homeowner's contact information right there on the listing itself, you know, by clicking on the tax button. And uh, we pay for a, su- a subscription to peoplefinders.com. Uh, where we'll take their name and we'll search it, you know, with the city that they, they live in and we'll try and find, you know, any available phone numbers for them. And then our agents will contact them. If none of those numbers work or if they're unable to reach um, uh, the seller, then we'll put them into a drip campaign where we'll start mailing to them. Um, because we know your house was just listed, it expired or it was released, so there is a motivation to sell there. We just need to get in front of you at the right time. So uh, we'll put them into a drip campaign where we snail mail uh, uh, marketing pieces to them. But uh, every Wednesday evening, our agents get together and they um, call all the expireds from that week. And there are some agents who will take their uh, expired listings and and continue to call them if they haven't reached them right away and bring them back the next Wednesday. But that's probably uh, one of our primary sources of, of listings outside of door knocking. Okay. Now, now, w- when you door knock, that that's your farm. Now, do you? Because I know uh, I don't know if you've ever used Land Voice Data. Have you ever used Land Voice Data? 
No, I have not. So Land Voice, uh, Land Voice, if you have a farm, they can literally get you the phone numbers to everybody in your farm. Uh, so I'm, I'm, have you ever – because ideally with a farm, right, you knock it, you mail it, you call it. Um, in terms mm-hmm. of calling your farm, is that is that a, a path that you do? You know, if we can find a, uh, a viable number, I mean, we, we use people finders and we can always look up the homeowner's uh, um, legal name on the uh, county assessor's site. So um, if we can get a good number for them, we will call them. Uh, but for the most part, getting out and getting face-to-face with them, we find to be much more effective because, you know, it's easy to hang up on somebody on the phone, but yeah. if they're face-to-face with you at the door, it's a lot harder to, to close the door on their face. And then, of course, the other side of that is how we approach them. You know, we approach them not asking them for anything, but asking them if they know of anybody uh, yeah. who might be interested. Right. And look, for, and I'll, I'll, get, I'll let you – so for everybody as well as you, Bo, I have a link. You can go and try Land Voice out. I, I fully endorse them for sure, and you can just go to landvoicedata.com slash super agents live and they'll let you try it out for free so so anyhow oh, um, awesome. yeah yeah dude and, and, and it's like and if when and if you decide to pay for it it's like 60 bucks I'll, I'll bet you uh doing the the math on on uh dropping people finder and all the labor i bet it's a way better uh way better um channel for you guys uh, all right we have to oh, wrap okay. up and I, i'm a, i normally ask three of the same questions well, I, well maybe we can just power through them so look i always ask the same, same three questions um the first one is this: You are a guy. You're a self-taught guy. I know that, and you know, and, and you've been, you know, whether it's HTML or social media. But for you, Bo, who has been a mentor to you? <laughs> well, I've got quite a few. I, um, as I was starting to build my business, I sought out the top agents in our market, and I asked all of them if I could take them to lunch, obviously individually. And I had a set list of questions I'd ask them. So I, I did develop a few local mentors here. Um, another one is uh, Chris Angel. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. Not the magician, <laughs> but the real estate coach. No. Um, I met him here locally. He, uh, he's a, a real estate coach, and I think he also has a, a podcast out there now, too. Hmm. Um, but he's been a mentor to me, and he's a, a great guy with a lot of insight and knowledge about uh, the real estate industry. Um, outside of that, um, I have mentors who probably don't even know that they're my mentors, uh, people like um, Ben Kinney, um, who I uh, have heard speak several times. I'm on his mailing list, so I, I uh, read up on him quite a bit. Um, I think I told you I read Pat Hyben's book yep. um, here recently. And so a lot of, a lot of people like that, high producers um, that are nationally recognized, I, I, I like to read up on and study as much as possible, and I, I reach out to them. Uh, another great one is Lori Ballin down in Vegas. She yeah. sent me a few referrals, and she's got some phenomenal systems, and she's just dominating her market. Um, so, so that's somebody that I, I know personally, although we've never met face-to-face. But I basically, you know, I'm self-taught. When people ask me, you know, where would you learn all this stuff, I say the University of Google. Yeah. <laughs> you can learn just about anything off of Google and YouTube. Uh, but also just by tracking down people that have what I want and asking them questions and kind of bugging them until they give me the answer. And it's, you know what? And, and, the, and the deal is, you know, most of those people, whoever, uh, you know, everybody's most people are willing to share. I mean, that's why, you know, I mean, we've we've been able to do what we've done with this show with who we've done it with. Um, so, mm-hmm. so listen, I always ask for a book recommendation. I'm always curious as to, as to what um, guys like you are reading. Uh, so, and here's a setup. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Oh, gosh. It's going to be one of the three that all of our agents are required to read. Okay. Um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie yep. is one of my all-time favorites. I'm on my ninth time reading it, um, and I absolutely love that book. It's like a Bible to me. Um, Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill is another fantastic one, wow. and uh, probably one of my all-time favorite books is The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. Um, that one in particular is great for mindset, and you know if you're going to be successful in real estate, you're going to have to deal with some ups and downs, a lot of ups and downs, and uh, having a strong mindset and being focused and knowing what your goals are and what steps you're taking towards those goals um, are, are what's going to get you there. And that book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, really helps you to stay focused and helps you to understand just how the mind works and 
how maybe your self-talk and some of the things that you're saying to yourself or saying about yourself when you talk to other people um, really affect your outcome. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons why it's a uh, required reading for us. Um, yeah, and I, I have not read that one. I'm, I'm going to go grab it. And look, for everybody, those I couldn't agree more. Uh, um, Napoleon Hill's Think Grow Rich, you need to read it. Uh, win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie, you need to read that. And I'm going to add, uh, for me, I'm going to read this power of your subconscious mind. And it looks like, it looks like uh, there is a 346 – there's a six-hour – is that right? That's right. There is a six-hour uh, video on YouTube of this. Now I don't know what this is. I don't know if somebody's oh, reading. Oh wow! It. Yeah, I don't. Um, um, I don't know if somebody is reading it or uh, or it's a class. But but yeah, I just googled it. So power of your subconscious mind. Um, go check it out. And listen, everybody. If you haven't, you you know you can get a free copy, right? You guys just use our link. For any one of these books or any other book, uh, I just got an 86-hour The Power Broker about this guy who, who built New York. Uh, it was an $86 book on Audible. I got it for free using our link. So just go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive uh, and get a free copy. Now, it, my last question for you, Bo, is this. Do you have any personal habits that you feel have contributed to your success? Uh, well, you know, I people are always uh, – uh, telling me that they admire my thirst for knowledge, and I, I guess that would be um, one of my personal habits that um, I can uh, credit some of our success to. Um, I'm always on YouTube. I'm always on Google. I, I think of a, a new strategy that I want to get into, or I have a, a hot new idea that I think will generate more business, and I will spend hours online at night um, watching videos and reading blogs and reading forums and just researching um, different strategies until I get a good feel for it and, and can kind of teach myself how to put that strategy into play. So um, one of the things that uh, my agents and a lot of my friends make fun of me for is they'll see that I'm online at 2 or 3 in the morning, and that's because I'm having a hard time sleeping because I'm too excited about some kind of a new idea or strategy, and I'm researching it. So, um, you know, I, I'd say that that's probably my uh, best success habit. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And look, I mean, so many people have come on the show and say, listen, you know, you need to be learning-based. You need to be learning-based. You always need to be learning and growing. So I love that one. Well, look. I'm talking fast. I'm trying to keep it within our, our 60 minute time frame. Here's the deal. You know, I, I always encourage my audience if they've gotten anything out of this episode, and I know they have, I always ask them to reach out and say thank you to you, my guest, uh, for, for taking time out of your busy day. So, Bo, where can people find you? Well, they can, uh, they can always go to our website, and that's www.ohanarealtygroup.com. Um, they can feel free to email me. My email is bo, B-O, at ohanarealtygroup.com. Um, and I don't know if I ought to give out my cell phone number here. <laughs> you tell me. You <laughs> not to, no, 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 man. Yeah, don't do that. There's okay. the, there's plenty of ways to, I, mean, I you know, it, it's just well, like, it, hey, hold on. I just want to say this. It's a lot like, I think, a lot like how your Craigslist thing, right? Don't make it too easy for them. You know, if they want to know something for you, from you, right? Have you, I'm sure you're going to get people asking you questions. You know, make them, make them work for it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good, great point. You know, another place they can find me that I, I don't know why I didn't mention this in the first place is on my Facebook account. It's uh, facebook.com slash Bono's Real Estate. Got it. I don't know how I got that one, but I was lucky enough to get it. Um, yeah. So, so listen, everybody, if, if, you know, and I'm sure Bo, you're always looking for talent. So if you're in and around the Spokane area or the, uh, or the tri cities area of Washington, uh, reach out to bro. I'm sure he's looking for talent. And, uh, and for me, Bo, I'll be the first one to kick off the thank you train. Thanks, man. Thanks for taking the time out. Oh yeah. Thanks for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Sure. All right, buddy. Hey, well, let's stay in touch and I'll send you an, I'll send you a link about that thing we talked about prior to recording. Sounds great. See you, bud. I think so. Let's go.